Hello, I'm Sasha Kostich, President of MasterCard Canada. Well, Sasha, thank you so much for joining me today and for taking the time to, to speak with us. Um, we're going to be speaking about uh, the present, the future of the financial services sector in Canada. I'm really looking forward to getting your opinions on what's shaping it, what we could be, and also, most importantly, what we need to do to get there. So thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Tim. I'm excited to be talking to you today. Awesome. So first, I want to start general in terms of seeing how you would describe the current state of Canada's financial services sector. And uh, importantly, its ability to innovate and compete globally. Great question. So I would start with, you know, as you mentioned, where are we right now? Canada's financial systems is recognized as one of the strongest in the world, Tim. We've been a leader in many payments innovations for the past number of decades. If you think about chip, EMV, contactless, and increasingly digital and e-commerce. But we are seeing a shift. I would say we're sort of at a transformation in the financial services and technology sector. And that shift is being driven by changing consumer and business demands, fueled by technology, and of course, most recently, uh, COVID as well. Uh, and I would say that we're definitely seeing that this um, foundation of this transformation is due to two things. One, we're living in an on-demand society. And so both consumers and businesses want faster payments, want faster services, including payments. And secondly, an increasing demand for choice. Both consumers and businesses want to be the ones who choose how they get paid, when they get paid. Uh, and so underlying, I think, a lot of the transformation, not only in the digital space, but really with respect to faster payments and this real-time rail that is being built for, for Canada, a national payment system to enable faster, data-rich payments 24-7, uh, 365 days a year. Uh, and I think that will definitely help both consumers, consumers and businesses meet their needs of more choice um, and on-demand payments. And we're very pleased from a MasterCard perspective, of course, to be partnering with Payments Canada to build an important part of that infrastructure. You mentioned that real-time rail payment system. That's, of course, what underlies uh, open banking as one of the core tenets of it. How would you describe open banking in general? Because it's been spoken about so much that I think it's, it's become a catch-all term. So how do you characterize it? Uh, and also, how do you characterize or describe its importance for the future of Canada's financial ecosystem? So you're right to ask, what is the definition of open banking? Because I do think uh, it's relatively broad, depending on who you ask. The way I would answer that question is, it is a technology-enabled process where both consumers and businesses have a choice in sharing financial data with authorized secured third parties in a secure manner. We think that creates a whole number of opportunities for new use cases, and most importantly, new partnership that, again, puts consumers and businesses at the center of determining how financial data is used uh, and empowering with them with control. And so as an example, think about all of the paperwork that is involved in proving your eligibility for credit, whether that is for a card, a mortgage, a loan, all the documents you need to gather from various sources to present to who has ever given you that credit tool, it's historically a bank. Now, imagine if you could provide all of that information, your recent financial history, um, at the click of a button. And so that's an example of what open banking brings from a consumer perspective. Convenience, choice, more customers, more customized financial services, uh, and a more holistic view um, of competitive pricing. When I was in Sweden, the very beginning of this journey was first time I presented at a financial services payments conference, there was a big space between traditional financial institutions and fintechs. They were very much focused on competition and outdoing one another. The next year at the very same conference, the conversation was much more around how do we work together? Uh, and the reason that that's important is because the core skills of a financial institution, the core skills of a fintech are fundamentally different. And so if you, I think if you think about how they compete versus how they connect, connection is where we're going to see consumers and businesses being put at the center of the value equation. And when we put them at the center, I think we can work together differently. How would you describe the, the general fintech ecosystem and innovation within it in Canada 
And what are the trends or the forces that you see having the big, biggest impact on the future of fintech in Canada? So I think fintechs are playing a really important role in helping challenge how we traditionally have seen or executed um, consumer and business payments, if I think about it through that lens. And, and what I mean by that is uh, they, fintechs have two very interesting perspectives. They don't have the legacy that many financial institutions have. And so because of that, uh, they can create consumer experiences. They can create uh, innovative um interaction models uh, that maybe is harder for some financial institutions to create. The, de- the opposite side of that is what they don't have is necessarily the depth in security um, and the depth in trust that financial institutions would historically have. And so I think the opportunity is for fintech and financial institutions with MasterCard, again, as that bridge factor is to figure out how do we pull all of these together? very strong legacy of trust, uh, really innovative consumer experiences in a way that when put together, um, they can build again, better opportunities for consumers and for Canadian society. What I think is really interesting about fintechs is we see them playing in narrow but well-defined aspects of the payments ecosystem, whether to our previous conversation that's around open banking, around artificial intelligence, around identity solution, they have the ability to focus on a niche. And when we can take that niche and pair it with um, broad um, ecosystem uh, sort of infrastructure, then I think that's where we see uh, really strong innovation and helpful innovation happen. Uh, And the reason that that's important is because the core skills of a financial institution, the core skills of a fintech are fundamentally different. And so if you, I think, if you think about how they compete versus how they connect. Connection is where we're going to see consumers and businesses being put at the center of the value equation. And when we put them at the center, I think we can work together differently. Well, I want to move a little bit into a bit of a niche sector of, uh, of the future of the financial ecosystem, which is crypto slash uh, Web3 and that whole space ecosystem. Uh, MasterCard has made moves and announcements uh, within it. So I'd like to know what you think are the biggest factors that are shaping crypto and decentralized finance uh, in Canada and how you see Canada uh, fitting into that ecosystem and being able to innovate within it and compete or even lead within it. What are your views on the future of that space and our position within it? MasterCard is definitely expanding the adoption of Web3, a new iteration of the internet based on blockchain. We're bringing our payment network into Web3 and NFTs. And maybe just to pause there for a minute and make sure, uh, again, we clarify uh, another buzzword in the industry, but what are NFTs, right? NFTs are unique digital assets. You could say they're a form of cryptocurrency linked to blockchain that represent ownership of real world items. And so we believe that as NFT adoption increases, the process of buying and selling NFTs needs to be easier and safer. And that is our sweet spot. We talked about the real-time rail. Now, as we talked about um, cryptocurrency, when there is a platform or an ecosystem that enables uh, cryptocurrency to be um, bought and sold safely and securely, Customers can get the things they want with less stress and less uncertainty. Um, And it means for creators, they can grow their potential customer base. So if we think about NFTs specifically, when NFTs can be purchased safely and securely, customers can buy the one, whatever NFTs they want on the marketplace of their choice. There's no need to buy crypto first. We just did some research and our new payments index shows that over a third, 36% of Canadian consumers agree that NFTs and digital assets could be good investments. Um, And that's an important word in there when they say could be good investments. So why are they not good investments today? They're not good investments today or perceived as not good investments today because there's A, a level of knowledge that still needs to be built. uh, B, a level of comfort around how to transact. And so that's part of what we're trying to do is build um, the ability to transact more easily. And three, a a sense of safety and security so that when they have assets that they are interested in, when they have a place that they can transact, that they're doing so in a way that 
ensures their money and their goods will get to and from where they want to be, whether those are physical goods or in the case of NFT, digital goods. And I think that is the key, is trying to find ways to make the buying and selling of digital goods as easy, as seamless, as comfortable as we buy physical goods today. That's the transformation that is happening globally, uh, and Canada certainly needs to uh, take part of that process as well. Let's speak about cybersecurity uh, a little bit, because I'm sure it's something that runs through absolutely everything that uh, MasterCard does, both externally and internally. Um, so I'd like to know from your vantage point, what you see is the intersection between cybersecurity, uh, AI, uh, the Internet of Things, especially when it comes to financial services and, and payments. And if you can look a bit forward, what you identify as the priorities in terms of innovation or problem solving uh, within that space that Canada really should be focused on? So this is a really critical question, Tim, because to your point, cybersecurity is now becoming the new lens through which um, virtually any company, technology, business, and increasingly consumers are looking through not just payments, but our daily lives. And what do I mean by that? If you think about um, what we do today, we're very comfortable as individuals um, and we're mindful about how we share our personal and our financial data with strangers, with other entities. We protect our passwords, we protect our phones, we protect our computers. But increasingly, we're also seeing more Internet of Things, more devices that may be inadvertently hidden or that we're not aware how connected to the Internet they are. So stats that I think um, we should all be aware of. IoT Analytics says that there are more than 12 billion actively connected IoT devices in 2021 and predicts that there will be more than 27 billion by 2025. So as these numbers keep increasing, the security and identification challenges become paramount, right? To how do these devices actually interact and what are they doing with the data that they are harnessing and collecting? And this is true when it comes to payment transactions as well, right? So over the next few years, we see, to your point, wireless communications, artificial intelligence, robotics, digital technologies coming together. And it could make it not only possible, but in some cases preferable for some of these internet connected devices to initiate payments without any human intervention. And that's a good thing because again, it makes things easier uh, for our daily lives. But it does mean that we should be thoughtful around uh, in these machine to machine payments that are different from a traditional consumer to business payment, user journeys, data exchanges, they need to be just as reliable and secure. And so um, what I think that means is we need to be a aware of how of where our data is and how it's being used. We need to be thoughtful and perhaps challenging companies on what are the data principles they have with respect to building new products, new solutions, um, and thinking about how do, we, how do we dispose of data once we're done with it. 